I have another meal for you today. This time it is going to be cranberry scones. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, yes, you're correct. Cranberry scones is not a meal, it's a dessert. And yes, you're right, it is a dessert. In fact, what I'm gonna be doing is all I brought out for my meal today was a sausage that I'm gonna be cooking over the coals here on the end of a stick, but I thought I'd come out and make this dessert and share it with you. So what's so special about a cranberry scone? Well, this is gonna be another of one of those low carb meals or low carb desserts in this case, made with cranberries that I picked right here in the, this vicinity off of the edge of the shore of the lake here. So I'm gonna pick some of these locally foraged cranberries or use some of these locally foraged cranberries along with my new bannock mix. I say new because I have been tweaking my bannock mix a little bit. I'll talk about the ingredients in this version of the bannock as we go to put this dessert together but I think what I, we should do is get out and identify how you can find some cranberries along the shore. So I've been walking along the edge of the lake here looking for some likely spots to find some cranberries I've been picking them up, one here, one there, a couple there, a couple there, but now I've just hit a small little patch of them that I think it will be a good representation of uh, not only the berries, where they grow, but what they look like when they're ready to be picked. So I've got a nice little patch right here. What I'm going to do is pick a couple here. I'll give you some close-ups on the video, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about identifying cranberries and any possible lookalikes that there are. So let me just grab a few of these. I have a little mason jar that I'm hoping to fill. I won't need all these for my scones, but you take them when you can. I'll take them home. I can freeze them. Let's see if I can show you this. Uh, yeah, all right, let's just take that little one off here. and I'll come over to the cameras. Hopefully I can give you a bit of a close-up on it. Good indication of what the plant looks like and when it's time to pick them. Now I'm hoping that the camera is focusing on this. So this is a single cranberry on a single stalk. Look at the tiny green leaves and what looks like a bit of a vine. Well, it is a vine and it will uh, run more or less flat along the ground. There is a single cranberry and it is predominantly red to dark red. There is some lighter red on the bottom, but that's okay. if. Uh, if there's any white to green, you can leave those for later or somebody else to pick. But if they're this color, there you can see how easy they come off of the stem. That is what we're looking for right there. Now some people will say, pick them after a frost. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, I've picked them in the spring after a winter and they were still good. Very jelly-like at that point. But right now they're quite firm. A little bit of give to them, and that is just fine because when they cook up, they will soften up just nicely. So I'm going to pick a few more of these berries here, and uh, we'll get back to making some scones. Okay, the preparation of the scone is actually a very simple thing to do. Now, there are a lot of recipes that I could be using, ones that would be may make a better scone if I was doing this at home and putting them in the oven. But for the woods, I think a bannock is a great base to use. Uh, this is a sweet bannock that I'm using in this one. And uh, like I said, I did change it. And I'll give you the ingredients now, and then we'll quickly put it together. So. Uh, in this bannock, we're going to be using a half cup of almond flour. So it is a gluten-free, low-carb flour that we're using. Alternatives could have been a lupin flour. And yes, I could have used coconut flour, but you have to use less coconut flour and end up using more water. So if you want to experiment with that, certainly do so. Almond flour just seems to be the most common, easily available type of material to use for this type of bannock. Now, as a binder, I have one quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. That's different from last time. Because this is a sweet bannock, I'm using two tablespoons of monk fruit blend as the sweetener. So there's zero carbs there. And I'm using a powdered egg instead of a raw egg. So I have a one tablespoon of egg powder in this mixture. I have two tablespoons of whole milk powder. 
and I have one half teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and I'll be using one tablespoon of, and I have notes of oil or butter, but today I'm going to be using ghee because, again, I like using ghee. I could have used olive oil. It introduces a bit of a flavor that ghee or butter does not, but it's a, certainly a viable alternative, as would coconut oil also be a good choice. And to all of that, I'll be using about one quarter cup of cold water. All right, so let's get this put together. So the mixture is already pre-mixed. Dump it into my bowl. All in. Now, I'm going to put the ghee in now. If you were making this at home, you might use butter and cut it in. In other words, kind of mix it through. This is going to be a rough one tablespoon. That should be about it, right? And it gets to be a little tricky trying to mix it through in the cold with just a spoon. Let's see what we can do. Likely if you weren't watching, I'd just get in there with my fingers. <laughs> Which you can do as long as they're clean, of course. You can get in and mix things with your fingers. You'll find it a lot more effective and a lot more efficient time-wise than doing it like I'm doing it with a spoon. But this is working. Sure, get it off the back of the spoon. So it's mixing through. Now, ideally, this would turn into a complete crumble. In other words, the ghee or butter that it would be using would mix so thoroughly with the bannock mix that it would turn into a, a crumbly kind of a mixture. Uh, it won't in this case because I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to work at it all that hard because I'll be adding water to it. This is going to make a good size scone, and I will give you the macros, meaning the total calories and the breakdown of fat, protein, and carbs. I'll put that in the show notes below or the video description below. Okay, that should be about right. Now, with any bannock or any mixture you're doing in the woods, unless you brought extra that you can afford to put in, um, start slowly with the water. So I'm going to put, I have... That's almost a quarter of a cup there. And that's the thing. You have to be conscious of how much you're putting in because if it gets too sloppy, you may not get to recover it. Oh, I think I... Well, it's a little bit sloppy. But, yeah, it's a little bit sloppier than I want it to be. But here's the nice thing. If I let this sit for a minute, it will thicken up and then I can put it into my pan... And, uh, yeah, if it had been a little bit drier, I'd been able to pick it up and form a patty out of it. And if I had kept a little bit of my mixture back, I could have added it to dry it out. This is where a little bit of coconut flour goes a long way. If you add coconut flour at this point, it absorbs so much of the moisture that it dries the thing right out. But that's good for mixing the cranberries in, so let's do that. My quarter cup of cranberries. I'll mix those through. I'm going to have a few minutes anyway to let this sit and thicken up because we have to get a fire built to cook this with. All right, the cranberries are mixed through. You don't want to beat them up so much that the cranberries start smashing and smushing inside of this. All right, there we go. There's the mixture, and I'll just let that set, and it'll thicken up a little bit as we go. All right, let's get the fire on. Since this is a video on cooking and not necessarily fire making. I'll just get this part of it going as quickly as possible. But I will take a second to enjoy something I haven't been able to do all summer, which is to have an open fire. There we go. I'll set that in on top of my base. And since it has been a wet, and I mean wet, day in the woods, I'm going to ensure my fire a little bit more with a bit more pieces of birch bark to make sure even these slightly damp sticks get the heat that they need. It's in all dead pines, lower branches. Been a while since I've made open fires, I probably should have put a brace behind this and had this all ready to drop on top, but it's still going to catch. 
There's a saying that fire likes chaos. So a perfectly prepared fire bundle, it's not necessary really. However, having said that, I will be building a fire in a very specific style because I haven't mentioned yet how I'm going to bake this. Bannock, something I haven't done in quite a long time, and that is I'm going to use my reflector oven. And for a reflector oven, they seem to work best when the fire is teepee style, so that I get a high amount of radiant heat coming out away from the fire directly towards the uh, reflector oven. All right, so I think that's enough small stuff. Let's get some few bigger ones on. I don't know what that is. It feels damp though. That's not damp. I kind of jumped right from smalls to mediums without going th through or small to big. Big relative to the size of this fire, that is. All right, that's looking good. And I have a few pieces of hardwood I can add to this to just to extend spend the burn. This has been mostly pine so far. I think I'll put one more piece in and then, well, that's a big piece, that's too big. This piece is a good one. I don't want the thing to tip forward. The fire, that is. All right, that's not bad. Okay, let's get this meal into the oven. All right, my fire is quickly taken off behind me. I've got to catch up to it. So, yeah, my bannock did not thicken up as much as I would have liked. But that's okay, because... It'll cook. It will cook. So I'm going to flatten it down. This is going to be big. May have to cut the recipe down a little bit more <laughs> next time. <laughs> this is a two-person bannock. I don't have to eat it all, of course, right? So you can see I'm putting it in a little pan. This is a pan that I picked up at the thrift store to go along with my reflector oven. It seems to serve most of my cooking needs. Mm, it tastes good. All right, so... From this angle, you're not going to be able to see me using the reflector or putting it up against the fire, but I'll, I'll make sure that I come around behind. But basically, that's how it's going to sit inside of the reflector oven. Like I said, I'll show you. It's just going to take me a second to mount this in front of the fire, get this in, and then I'll reposition the camera. All right, so I moved the camera in behind the fireplace so I, we could look directly into the reflector oven. And I'm noticing now as I look at the reflector oven that it's tipped forward just a slight bit. Not as much as it looks like on the camera, but enough that I am going to go back and level it off a little bit so I don't lose my bannock into the fire, that is. But it looks like it's going to work out just fine. These things generate a lot of heat inside of there. Now, at some point, I'll add a thermometer, but you can easily go 400 degrees and get a nice rise of anything that you're baking. It's not dependent on the flame, as you can see. In fact, you don't want the flame entering into it. You just want the radiant heat, and that comes best from a tall fire like I've got going. So I'm, it'll take a few minutes for this to really start to rise. It's not going to do as well as it could have because I made it a little wetter than it should have been. But uh, when I think it's close to being ready, we'll take it back from the fire. I'll check it with a toothpick to see if it's done, and then we'll test it out. All right, it's been close to 15 minutes since I put this in front of the fire, the bannock in front of the fire. Fire's burning down. I added a few more sticks. As you can see, it's well browned on top. I did check a minute ago with a toothpick, and uh, which was just a branch, obviously. And uh, it's a little wet in the middle, but the, the issue is uh, it's full of cranberries. So it's going to be a little wet in the middle just from the cranberries themselves. I'm going to give it about two more minutes. I don't want it to burn but I want to make sure it is cooked. And what I'll do is I'll take it off the fire. It's still going to take five, 10 minutes anyway before it's cool enough that I can do anything with it. So when it's ready to break apart and take a look at the inside, that's when I'll bring it back. Okay, maybe five minutes or so, just enough time for me to eat my sausage, which I had on a stick. I don't know. Oh, okay, good. Now, maybe I don't need to do that. Yeah, maybe. All right, it is still a little bit wet, so what I think I'll do is I'm probably going to use a fork. It's going to make a different kind of a dessert, but I'll reset the camera up, and I can't pick this up with my fingers because it's still a little bit damp. As you can see, after it being in the oven, it kind of did 
uh, go down a little bit. I have reasons why I think that it took place, but uh, let's reposition the camera. We'll try this out and have a few comments on it. Okay, a good and proper bannock should be something I can pick up in my hands and break apart, or a scone for that matter. This is more like, I won't, not a pudding, but it is a uh, flexible dessert, we'll say. So what I'll do is I'm gonna use a fork for this one. I will break it open and I'll bring a piece up to the camera. It is cooked. So that you can see, come on, focus in there, camera. Hopefully that's going to focus in a little bit. There's the rest of it. So it is cooked. And it is good too. Wow, okay. So a couple of reasons why I think maybe it didn't uh, stay, it didn't cook quite the way I wanted to do. One, I had it too much water. Um, it's still an experimental bannock. It works well as a bannock, but when I put all those cranberries in there, it introduced a lot of moisture that made it hard to cook. Uh, a little less hot oven and a little longer time, and it may have cooked more into the middle. It's not raw. I don't want you to get the impression like I'm eating a doughy dessert. It's not. It's just it's very soft. Something closer... Not to a pudding, I don't know what to call it. A pie, maybe, or some type of a, a tart or a flan. Not being a cook, I don't know all the proper terms for this. But, it does taste good. There are some things I would do differently again next time. Like I mentioned, I would play a little bit more with the bannock mix. I'll probably use this bannock mix or something very near to it for other things, but for something with cranberries, I need to use something I know will rise and stay risen. I did not put in orange peel and or orange rind or orange zest, which is very easy to do at home. If you have any oranges, just run them down a grater and get all kinds of little pieces of orange off of the edge, put them in with it, and it may adds amazing flavor. I didn't put any other spices. I could have put in some cloves or cinnamon, any number of things, I guess. I just wanted to get the flavor of the cranberries, which I have, and spades. It's very good. Can't stop eating. Mm. But when you bite into a hot cranberry, you get that tartness, but tempered by the sweetness of the sweetener that I put in this. All right, so what I'm going to suggest at this time is I'm going to finish my dessert, but if you have any comments on the way I prepared this meal, any suggestions on what you might do differently, altering the recipe, altering my technique, then please put all that in the comments section below. If you have tried this or something like it, then put your experiences in there as well. Uh, I invite you to give me as many suggestions on cooking out here in the woods, some low-carb, ketogenic-type meals or desserts like this. And I have a couple of interesting ones I'm going to try the next time I'm out. I don't have enough time today. Well, I didn't bring the materials anyway. But uh, yeah, so we'll, talk, we'll uh, talk more about this the next time I'm out. I'll try to improve this recipe and we'll see what we can do with this. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because you know it will make all the difference. Bye for now.